Hello, travelers. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Expedition Confidential. I am starting a new series on relocating abroad. Uh, there has been a lot of questions on my Instagram um, that have come in about how to even get the process started. So I will be sharing with you in this series, this uh, specific episode, we're going to be focusing on the reason why choosing a country in the first 26 steps that you need to make in order to get you through the process and on your journey of moving abroad, going from dream into reality. So please grab a notepad, pen or pencil, a beverage, sit back and join me and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so to start off with, write down why. Why are you looking to relocate? Why are you looking to move abroad? What are you seeking that you think that you will find outside of your home country or your country of origin? There are several reasons why you might want to move abroad. Um, I did write several of them down. Let's go ahead and go over them now. Um, educational opportunities. So it could be the cost of education. It could be that some universities or a, some private schools may offer a type of curriculum or major that you cannot find um, in your home country. It could be that. In my case, it'd be the United States. So, um, relocating to another country would probably be good for me because I personally cannot afford um, education here on you know, on my own. I already have student loans from a degree that I wasn't able to finish. And so moving abroad would probably be good for me personally because then I would be able to finish my education. So that could be one reason. Another could be a job transfer. If you are one of the lucky ones who are able to relocate abroad, what a gem what an opportunity, please take them up on that. That could be a once in a lifetime um, rare opportunity for you that um, so many people would give anything to be able to take so and take advantage of. So please, please, if you have that opportunity, use it to a, its full advantage. Your life will never be the same in a good way. So another one would be military service, of course. Um, you know, there are air, uh, military bases in every country, so that could be another reason, and also a, a good reason to join the military. Um, I personally come from a military family, the Air Force, so I have uncles, aunts, cousins, my brother, my father, my grandfather. Um, they were all in the military, most of which were in the Air Force. Um, I worked on the Air Force base with my father and my cousins, and my mother, um, both my mother and retired my mother and my father retired from the Air Force Base, so I am a military brat. And so, yes, relocation is just kind of in my blood. I went to three different high schools. Um, we moved to different states. I've lived in eight different states uh, within my lifetime. And um, so, yeah, it could just kind of be in your blood or it could be uh, your career choice. So military for sure. Um, affordable cost of living and retirement. So here in the United States, the cost of living is very high. There are some states where um, the cost of living in, in regards to housing could be low. However, you still have to pay for health care. There's still inflation of food and gasoline. Um, educational costs, and then of course healthcare. So everyone in the United States has private insurance, and sometimes there could be state-run insurance that you could have, but it may not cover everything that you need. So healthcare, um, also medical tourism, where I do have a, co a past co-worker that actually um, is in remission right now um, from cancer, and they went to Greece actually to get cancer treatments and um, decided not to stay there, but they did have the option to stay there. So um, that could be, depending on your situation, a reason why also you would go. Let's see. Um, lower tax rate for assets and investments. Those who are entrepreneurs um, or business folk or who may have a lot of investments, um, offshore investments, um, legal, of course, but um, they could obtain some tax breaks from doing that um, as far as, uh, oh, and included uh, real estate investments. So rental properties, things like that. Um, a lot of times if you were to purchase property in um, various countries, you would um, obtain an automatic residency. 
um, and there's a visa for that. So there's, um, you know, different things that you can look into depending on your current situation and personal situation. Let's see. Um, oh, 23 and me or ancestry.com. So I did 23 and me and I was super shocked because um, I was raised to believe that I was of Spanish and Jewish heritage um, with a little bit of French. Come to find out, I'm actually 62.9% Spanish Portuguese with, um, a, I think, probably 9% French and 24% Native American. And the bottom portion was Sub-Saharan um, African, which I think is probably in all of, all of our DNA at some point. And then I had a 1% Jewish. So shocking for me that I was raised um, thinking that I was way more Jewish than I was. Um, and I was a little disappointed because what a beautiful culture it is. Um, and I just respect it so much. But Spanish Portuguese, I had no idea. I had no idea. So now I'm pretty obsessed with that region and learning more about where I come from and where my family comes from. So that could also be a reason why you want to move abroad. You want to um, trace your roots. So very common. And whether you want to visit there, spend a year in a country, um, or decide that after the year in that country that you want to stay and become a local and a resident um, and to fully assimilate into that country, um, you wouldn't be the first person. You definitely won't be the last. It's done every single day. So that's definitely an option. And the last one that I could think of off the top of my head actually was um, political factors. So let's just keep it real. Um, right now in the, in the United States, we are embarking on a uh, soon to be election very exciting and somewhat terrifying times for um, most of the Americans here, no matter what side you may be on. Um, so there are, in every election, there's always going to be um, individuals who air their grievances by saying things like, if, you know, so-and-so gets elected, I'm leaving the country. Well, um, that is actually done. That actually happens um, every election. Um, Americans you know, leave in order to um, find their personal greener pastures and other uh, individuals from other countries move into the U.S. So it's just like a, a flow. It's just a flow in and out. Um, this election is going to be no different. So there are a lot of individuals that are saying if one side um, gets elected, we're going to leave. If another side gets elected, we're going to leave. So most likely they're not going to all flee to the same country because again we're going to go over what you need to look for in various countries that you choose to live in pardon me so that's going to vary and change depending on um, your personal needs and values so uh, what i need to say about political reasons though is that it is important to choose a country with a government that you can live with um with political values that you share um, because if you are going to move there and assimilate and be a local their tax, the way that they handle their taxes, the way that their government is run will affect you personally. So make sure that you're totally, you do your homework and your research and they are completely savvy on the country in which you are choosing to move to. So there aren't as many surprises. So very, very important. Okay, so moving on, um, I want you to write down the five must-haves for your new country. What are the five things that are like literally um, they have to be what you're looking for in the new country. Like that new country has to inhabit those five things at least. You can come up with 10, you can come up with 20, but at least choose five things that you are looking for in a new country that maybe you cannot find in your current country of origin or home country. So let's go ahead and start with those five. So go ahead and pause my video and go ahead and write those down now. So five things. All right. Let's go ahead and get started now. These are the 26 aspects that you need to research in order to locate the perfect country for you. All right. So um, everyone asked me, who has asked me, how do I even get started? I don't even know how to start this. What, what's the process? Who do I talk to? Where do I go? So many resources. First of all, there are so many books on Amazon on it. There's so many um, videos on YouTube that you can watch besides mine. There are um, you know, so many blogs on it, on just your typical Google search. Um, out of all the research that I have done um, to 
work on my own relocation abroad, but I'll get to that way later in the series and I'll let the cat out of the bag at that time. These are the things that I have had to research and come across. There's 26 steps in order to start. So let's go ahead and start with step number one. Get a passport and consider global entry. So the difference between global entry and TSA is that TSA, there is a background check and fingerprints, and um, it's basically a security mechanism where you can cut the line. So you've already been... Um, vetted and with the government and so they know that you are safe and you know that your background check has come back clean with the fbi and all of that in which case um there are some security measures that no longer apply to you at the airport so with global entry um well let's see tsa is about 75 dollars i think us right now global entry is around a hundred dollars it lasts i believe for five years um five years and with global entry, it includes TSA, but it also includes um, cutting the line in customs. So if you are going to move abroad um, or even relocate for a year or however the time spent, if you're coming back into your country of origin, you want to be able to cut the line to buy, you know, bypass, not bypass customs. You still have to go through customs, but you will be able to um, cut the line and it'll be a much shorter process for you. So um, I would definitely consider that. Um, it would just make your life easier in the long run. So step number one, get a passport, obtain a passport. And you know, with the current election here in the US, I know with Americans we're having, it, it's a little bit longer um, span of time to obtain your passport and to go through the process because of the um, postal service um, saga that we have going on right now i'm sure no matter where you are watching this video from you are fully aware of what's happening with our postal service here in the united states so the first first and foremost get your passport very important second um consider the time span and preparation that you need in order uh to make your goal happen so i want to be living in a different country this time two years from now or one year from now or um, I have a five-year plan, or I need to get all of my ducks in a row, and that's going to take me a year, and then from there, I need to start planning, So, but I need to know exactly what to do. So consider your time span and the preparation time that it's going to take you to meet your goal, whether your goal is starting the preparation or obtaining a visa or landing in your new country that you call home. So number three, um, join Facebook forums and groups for insight and community. So many groups on Facebook in regards to um, the, the country that, of your choice. So a lot of expats have started groups on there, um, a lot of support, a lot of files that you can read, so much advice um, and experience, the personal experiences that they share on there, super helpful. I've made a lot of friends on the forums in which I am a part of. And um, I, yeah, I've made actually really good friends and uh, um, I've obtained so much good advice and insight. So I would definitely um, highly recommend doing that as well. Let's see, number four, um, citizenship. Uh, look into the citizenship of, of various countries that you're interested in, uh, the process, um, the dur duration, and whether or not they accept dual citizenship. Are you allowed to be a dual citizen? Or are they going to um, require that you renounce your citizenship from your um, home origin, um, country of origin? Something to consider. Um, renouncing your citizenship is permanent. Um, for, I mean, you can always apply for citizenship again, but it is a big... I kind of call it <laughs> global vasectomy a little bit. Like it's, you know, you should see it as permanent. Um, although it can be reversed, it's a huge process and it doesn't always take. So make sure <laughs> either prior to getting a vasectomy or announcing your citizenship, make sure that you, that this is a decision that you have thought a lot about and that you are comfortable and at peace with uh, the decision that you have made. So. I look into whether or not that's going to be a requirement. Uh, let's see. How long will you be living under a temporary residence permit and how long till you can apply for a permanent one? Very important things to research as well. Uh, number six, fingerprints and FBI reports. Obtaining um, residency permits, a school permit, work permit, what have you, are FBI checks and background checks um, and the fingerprints 
are they required? So definitely look into that as well. Number seven, the required monthly amount needed in cash or investments to prove that you have the means to live in the country will be a contributing member of the community and not a drain on the country's resources. So very important. If you look at Costa Rica, Ecuador, um, any country within the EU, um, Australia, New Zealand, they will have a required amount that you need to bring in of income monthly um, that they see as qual a qualifying factor of you being able to live there and being a contributing factor and not being an individual who may be a drain on their resources. So they will always make sure that you have at least a year's worth of income in monthly whatever the mathematical equation that um, they require. So definitely look into that to see exactly what the minimum amount that you need to make an income or have in your bank account monthly, yearly, and probably for five to 10 years. So they're looking at all investments, they're looking at what's in your checking account, they're looking at your debt. So um, if you do see a relocation as permanent, make sure that you have minimized your debts. Now I know that student loan debt is gonna be difficult for most people as it will, you know, we will be 85 years old before we pay it off, let's just be real. Um, however, when it comes to credit card debt, um, you know, probably another thing you wanna do is to um, go to Equifax or, um, What's the other one? Trans, TransUnion? Trans, hmm, I forget. But you know what I'm talking about. Um, the credit bureaus and request a copy of your credit report just to make sure that there's nothing, you know, fishy or anything that um, is happening with your credit. Start paying that off because when you want to relocate, when, when it comes to getting another visa, that will be uh, taken into account. So um, do pay off as many um as many debts as you possibly can. Also, for a lot of countries, when you move to that country, if you become a citizen, um, sometimes it takes a year, sometimes five years, sometimes automatic, depending on the qualifications and requirements, um, your, cre your credit here in the United States will no longer be a factor. So you could have a incredible credit that you've worked super hard on for years. You could have poor credit. If you are qualified to move to another country, none of that will matter. You will start from scratch and it will level the playing field for you. So um, you will start with their version of credit um, and your you, uh, the credit that you've obtained in the United States will no longer be a factor. So that is something also that you want to think about. Um, let's see here. Uh, number eight, climate, the various seasons and their temperatures. Um, so what exactly are you looking for in let's see here are you looking for in a country are you looking for island life um more metropolitan architecture history um art culture that type of thing are you looking for a really strong nightlife are you looking for countryside the mountains or do you want to no write a novel and you just want peace and tranquility you literally want a hammock and a lake or an ocean, or I guess you can't have a hammock at an ocean, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, do you just want peace and tranquility and quiet and not a lot of people? What exactly are you looking for? So write down when you close your eyes and you think about your future or you think about retirement, what do you see? What do you see? What is the landscape? What's the scenery? What are your neighbors like? So that's something that you want to think about is that will definitely narrow down um, what country that you want to relocate to by far, whether you want island life or metropolitan city, um, history, um, you know, landmarks, um, wonders of the world, whatever it is that you're looking for, um, that will narrow it down quite a bit as well. So let's see. Where did we leave off here? We left off, I believe, at eight climate, various seasons and their temperatures. Do you want temperate climate? Do you like humidity? Do you do you prefer the snow? What is it that you're looking for? Do you mind overcast cloudy? Like, do you live in Portland, Oregon, where I used to live where or Seattle, where that's just kind of the life there? And, you, you know, nothing more than needed than taking a few vitamin D tablets. So um, it's completely up to what it is that you're looking for. But Take a look at the climate and the temperature for sure. Um, number nine, private health insurance. Um, do you need a 
policy, like a private um, health insurance policy, um, until you become a permanent resident, because some countries, even though they may have socialized health care, and that is what um, you may be looking for, until you become a permanent resident, which sometimes can take up to five years, you may need private health insurance. Now, it can be super affordable, but um, it could also be a requirement. So make sure that you're fully aware of that and uh, because a lot of times they won't accept your visa application until they know that you have that. Um, again, it's just one of those like not being a drain on their society or their resources um, until you have proven to be a contributing factor to their community. Um, and your income is just one of those factors. Um, whether or not you are insured and um, protected Healthcare wise could be another factor. So look into that for sure. Um, let's see here. The local government, are they conservative? Are they democratic? Socialist, democratic socialist? Is there an upcoming election and who are the candidates? Possible changes in the government? Are there current protests? Those are things that you want to look at. You want to make sure, again, um, as aforementioned, that their political values and their government values match your own um, and that that is a country that you can see yourself living in or that maybe do not obtain current deal breakers for you. However, is there going to be an upcoming election? Who are the candidates and what are their platforms? Make sure that it's something that you can live with. So very important. Um, number 11, bureaucracy. Uh, we have something here in California called the DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles. It's called different things in different states and in different countries. But uh, the equivalent of the DMV, um, banks, utilities, um, you want to probably visit the, the website for the local embassy in the consulate um, to see how they go about doing that. Again, the forums are super, super. Um, did I just spit? I think I spit. Pardon me. Anyway, super classy. Um, the forums are really great on Facebook because they will actually uh, share personal experiences. They will give out the, the names of who they're working with. If they're highly recommended and so super helpful for that sort of information as well. Um, bureaucracy can be really slow. Now, again, especially if you're moving to a European country, they um, their way of life is much at a much slower paced and they are not in a rush. They're not very chop chop time is money like we are here in the States. They're not so business minded that they are willing to spend like 12 to 16 hours at work. Um, they're much slower. They take their time doing things and it's a beautiful way of life. It's just something that, um, us, you know, Americans have to assimilate to. We're not used to it, but trust me, I could get used to that for sure. Um, you know, we all wish for patience, right? And sometimes the, your new country <laughs> that you call home will show you just what patience looks like. So anyway, that's, that can be a good thing, though. It's a good thing. Uh, number 12, the culture and the etiquette norms. Um, you don't want to go into a new country and step outside of the plane and then immediately, like a minute one, start offending, <laughs> whether it's by hand gestures or um, you know, noises that you make with your throat or, you know, things like that. Who knows? It could be just little ticks that we have. It could be little idiosyncrasies. It could be little habits that we have that maybe they find very offensive. Like in some countries, you can't do the okay. You're not allowed to do the thumbs up. Um, you know, it's basically the equivalent of the middle finger. So be very careful. Research that. Do, you know, do your homework in regards to what the culture norms and etiquette is and make sure that you don't stand out like a sore thumb. So, um, uh, number 13, uh, do they speak your language? So in the country that you're going to, do they speak the language of your country of origin or are there specific cities within that country that speak your language? Um, so something to also think about, um, maybe start Rosetta Stone or start Duolingo um, or any other type of app that you have where you can start learning words and phrases just to kind of help you along. If anything, it'll help you from the taxi ride from the airport to your new home. <laughs> so anything that you can do to make your life easier, do and just practice at home. Um, let's see here. Number 14, local religion and how they view other religions. So, you know, we all have a belief system, whether it even is atheism. How do they, how did the country that you're going to, how do they look at that? Um, how, you know, 
do they judge that? Are they open-minded about it? So definitely something to look into. Again, part of the culture and the etiquette um, and norms, you don't want to offend them, especially when it comes to their belief system. So let's see what we have here. Um, number 14, local religion. Oh, I already did that. Uh, number 15, LGBTQ views and communities. Um, are they also city specific? Um, is the LGBTQ community um, thriving? Is there a large community and are they protected in that country? Um, what are the views there? So very, very important. We all know someone or love someone in that community and, you know, they're they're in our lives and we want to protect them as well if they were to come visit how would that look would they be arrested would they be in trouble would they get in trouble do they have to hide i personally wouldn't want to move to a country where that would be the case um so it's definitely something to look into uh race relations number 16 uh race relations and discriminations how do they feel about that what are their values in regards to race relations and uh discriminations uh, number 17, gender equality and women's rights. Also, I mean, I'm a female, so that's very personal to me. I want to know that the country that I am relocating to is going to see me as an equal, as an individual. Um, they're going to respect my autonomy and individual, you know, and um, just who I am as a human being. And I, I will be treated as such. So that's very important to me. Um, number 18, the education system um, from daycare to university. What is their education system? Is it modern? Is it traditional? You know, how is that? Whether you have children that um, you need to look into that for or whether you um, are looking into it for yourself. So very important. Let's see here. Number 19, economy and industry, unemployment rate, minimum wage, uh, job availability, pension plan. Um, are there American companies also in the country to where a transfer is possible or will you preferably be a digital nomad? So those are some questions that you have to think about and maybe write down as well. Uh, number 20, cost of living. Of course, you know, cost of living, housing, um, you know, utilities, what, what is the cost there? And that's really easy to look up actually. And the Facebook forums are also really, really good for that um, in regards to talking people who already live in that country and they'd be able to let you know. And tons of YouTube videos on that as well. Let's see, uh, number 21, healthcare. You definitely want to look into that. 22, education. Um, oh, I think I already did education. Oh, the education system, yes, but education. Uh, 23, justice system, gun laws and restrictions, incarceration practices, immigration laws and views. Again, um, having to deal with politics and whether or not they match your values and, you know, and whether or not you can live with their practices. So very important. Uh, 24, moral views, uh, drug laws and prostitution, to name two out of many. Um, how does the country handle that? Um, what does that look like? You know, um, very important because when you are actually in that country, you may be seeing things that could shock you. Maybe it's outside of the norm of your country of origin. Um, but of course, you know, whenever you move to another country, Toto, you're not in Kansas anymore. So you know, of course, you're going to see things that that may be under the category of culture shock, but do your homework and do your research and, and make sure again that maybe the surprises are are few. Uh, let's see, 25, environmental impact and practices. Um, how do they feel about the environment? Do they recycle? Do they practice zero waste? Do they compost? Um, you know, do they have stores where, you know, you have like bins and you bring in your own package, you know, how they deal with packaging, how do they deal with all of that. So very, very important. Again, if it matches with your values, if you're into horticulture, gardening, things like that, um, you know, is that pretty strong there? Is that something that you'd be able to do there if you purchased land or had a house, rented a house that was on a plot of land? Could you do that there? Um, let's see here. Uh, number 26, their handling of COVID-19 in past epidemics. How has that country been handling the current pandemic? How have they been handling it? How, you know, if, if cases rise and fall, how are they going to handle it? And how have they handled past um, healthcare scares and epidemics as well? So definitely something to look for because whether we like it or not, um, coronavirus is a global 
it's international, it's here, it's here to stay. We may have a vaccine, um, even a cure down the line, but for the unforeseen future, it is with us and we need to learn how to um, work around it, live around it, um, be safe, use as many precautions, not just protect ourselves, but protect the ones we love and protect strangers and others. They too have, you have to go home with, you know, people that may be under, um, categories, uh, risk categories. So, you know, just be kind, be fair, do unto others as you would want to have done to you, you know, just your typical golden rule when it comes to coronavirus. I mean, just use common sense and be kind and do all things with your heart because we are all in this together. So that's very, very important. So, um, some, um, Things that you can look up websites and on the internet, some searches that you can make are the Social Progress Index, which is where I got a lot of these ideas and where I did a lot of my research as well. So the Social Progress Index, we have the Environmental Performance Index as well, World Economic Forum, the WEF Gender Gap Report, um, World Population Review, and the Global Peace Index. Um, if, you know, which country is the safest and if that is really important to you, um, the Global Peace Index is where you're going to find that for, uh, I believe right now, 2019. Um, so that is all I have today. I hope that you found this valuable. Um, I hope that they, that, uh, you know, planted some seeds and gave you some food for thought. Please like and subscribe. Please comment below. Let me know if there's anything that I missed. Um, any questions that you may have, um, I may actually do a video on them within this series. My next video is going to be on um, how to choose a city. Once you've chosen a country, now let's narrow it down any more. Let, more. Let's go ahead and choose a city and what that entails and what you want to look for um, with that. So with that being said, thank you again so much for joining me and for staying with me this long. I'm so sorry if I was talking nonstop. I was just trying to get through this video as quickly as possible because I do value your time and respect your time. Um, so again, thank you for hanging out with me. And um, please, again, comment below, like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. You take care. Bye-bye.